Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at IP services. Specifically within IP services, we're going to be focusing in on network time protocol, otherwise known as NTP. And in this lab, we're going to be taking a closer look at NTP authentication. So we must point out that NTP is used to ensure valid and consistent time is carried throughout the network. And NTP uses something known as a stratum, in which case the lower the stratum the better, or the more believable time source. So in this case we're going to configure router 2 as the NTP server, and then router 1 is going to be the NTP client. So the router 2 we're going to give a stratum value, and then we're going to see that every downstream router from router 2 that tries to receive time from router 2 the stratum number is going to increase by one. So the lower the better for the stratum. Again this is going to increment one for every hop downstream. And what we need to know also is that NTP can be secured so that unwanted individuals may not falsely set the time in your network, thus causing issues with your timestamps not being correct and your routers clocks not being set correctly. So we can use NTP to authenticate the time source which in this case will be our server so in this case we're gonna have again we have two routers router 1 and router 2 we have the network between R1 and R2 which is the 172.16.12.0 router 1 is the dot 1 and router 2 is the dot 2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and configure the link between R1 and R2. So on R1 we'll go under the Fast Ethernet 00, 0 interface. Again, Fast Ethernet 00, 0 interface is connecting R1 to R2 on both sides. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll put that out in our network so that you know what interface we're using. So on R1 we'll go under faster than at 00, zero give it the IP address 172.16.12.1 with the slash 24 subnet mask we'll go ahead and no shut the interface and for the simplicity of this lab we are not going to be using a routing protocol we're just going to run the subnet which is the directly connected interface between both R1 and R2 so on R2 we'll go under faster than at 00, zero as well put in the IP address 172.16.12.2. Again, this is going to be a slash 24. We'll go ahead